Hello everyone and welcome to another most impressive game from the Grand KHS Classic uh, 2024. Uh, so far I think uh, this could be the most complicated game, uh, also it could be the most interesting one. It is Maxim Vashelagra versus uh, Richard Rapport and um, uh, you know, as, you, as you're probably expecting, yes this is a bar, a bar fight and uh, many mistakes were made this game, it, it's hard to even... Uh, uh, comment on this game uh, just because there are so many uh, possible branches where I, uh, you know, both players could have gone uh, d differently and maybe played a better move. But we're just gonna, we're just gonna enjoy. It. We're not gonna go uh, into too much detail. Uh, so hope you you'll enjoy it like that. And for those of you who haven't seen my previous video, I suggest you check it out. But for those of you who will not, uh, here is some extra footage from the event. Uh, uh, the MVL versus Rapport table is the second one from the le left. Uh, let's check it out. Some very nice footage from the organizers and if you want to see the entire uh, intro or sort of a trailer for the tournament as Granky Chess Classic is the biggest chess tournament in the world, uh, first link in the description below. It's uh, some minute and a half so do, do check it out. But now let's uh, see what the game. Uh, MVL with the white pieces opens with e4 and uh, Richard goes for the French defense with pawn to e6, d4, d5, knight to c3 and bishop to b4. We have the vinegar variation of the French uh, and pawn to e5, the advanced variation. We have pawn to c5, a3, uh, bishop captures, b captures, and knight to e7. So this is the main line. Uh, and um, uh, there are many, many popular continuations here, like uh, pawn to h4, pawn to a4, uh, queen to g4, but queen to g4 being the most popular one uh, is what MBL goes for. Queen to c7, and now uh, Queen captures on g7 is still the main move, uh, but sometimes bishop to d3 is played. And I think a couple of um, games that we've covered, the queen to g7 was played, and you guys remember, then you go rook to g8, you capture on h7, then you capture on d4, then knight to e2 prevents queen captures on c3, and after you... Uh, play pawn captures, uh, now you uh, either start advancing the h pawn, or you move the queen back, or you play pawn to f4, defend the pawn on e5, and now you continue. Uh, in some variations, you might even be able to start pushing your h pawn right away, but uh, probably you will bring the queen back, play knight to d4, uh, and uh, just uh, consolidate a little bit. So we've had quite a few of these uh, lately, but here we have bishop to d4 by MVL, uh, asking Rapport, uh, do you want to capture on d4 or do you want to play pawn to c4? Now, uh, those are the two more, uh, most popular and um, uh, well, well, pawn to c4 might seem very annoying and you have to move your bishop back. It's also nice because you don't have to worry about um, a black doing any, any damage on the queen side. Uh, but now that that was played after bishop to d3, uh, Richard went for queen to a5. It's an extremely rare move. Uh, played mostly by Croatian Grandmaster uh, Leon Livajic uh, and uh, well with, with mixed results. So let's uh, check it out. We have Bishop to d2 preventing Queen captures on c3 uh, and Pawn to c4 now. Bishop back to e2 and now Rook to g8. Again all of this has been played before. We have Pawn to a4 uh, and now Knight b to c6. And uh, there is a game uh, like I mentioned uh, Leon Livajic uh, plays this with black. Daniel Darda played this last year in the Croatian team championship um, uh, and the, the, their game ended in a draw also against um, uh, Livajic uh, but in that game queen to h5 was played. Here we have knight to f3 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Uh, bishop to d7 preparing the castle queen side nicely continuing development we have castles king side and pawn to h6 preparing pawn to g5 we have rook f to b1 putting pressure on the G, uh, b7 pawn and king uh, goes to c8 by castling queen side. We have rook to b5, attacks the black queen, queen to c7, and now queen to f4. Puts pressure on the f7 pawn, and this is what uh, Richard wanted. He plays pawn to g5, invites the queen to capture on f7, which MVL does, and now knight to f5, sort of trapping the... Uh, white queen on f7 and indeed if you're not careful here let's say you play rook 8 to b1 or or something uh, it's it's a, a simple matter of rook d to f8 and once the queen moves you further uh, attack the queen with bishop to e8 and once the queen moves let's say to g4 then h5 and after queen to h3 g4 uh, and the queen is trapped th uh, thanks to the knight on f5. 
So after knight to f5, we have pawn to g4, uh, stopping all of that, as now the queen has a, a sort of a safety square on h3. Rook d to f8, queen to h5, and now bishop to e8. We have queen to h3 and pawn to h5. And uh, what do you play here? Okay, the g5 pawn has been weakened, so Maxime has to capture this. He plays knight, uh, knight captures on g5. H captures on g4, and now bishop captures on g4, and just queen to e7, putting more pressure on the knight on g5. So pawn to f4, defending, and rook to h8. Uh, going after the white queen, queen to g2, and now knight to d8. We have rook b to b b1, uh, going back, so you can shift the rook over to the f-file to help out with the defense. Uh, bishop to g6, and rook to f1. We have king to b8, getting the king to a safer square. Uh, and bishop to c1 now, trying to uh, get some skewering action with rook, uh, rook to a3. So rook f to g8, and now king to f2. And here you have to really figure out how to play this with white, because, I mean, with the king on f2, uh, it's just very, very difficult. You have to be uh, an MVL to play this. We have knight to h4, attacking the white queen, queen to g3, and now just bishop captures on c2. Not for the sake of capturing a pawn, but you, you want to... Uh, free up uh, the d3 square, so bishop is coming to d3 on the next move. We have king to e1, bishop to d3 attacks the rook, and the rook to g1. We have king to a8, uh, and now uh, there's uh, just too much stuff here on the g file. Queen to f2 was played, uh, and knight uh, to f5. Uh, we have bishop to a3 attacking the queen, queen to d7, and now bishop to d1. Uh, and here, uh, knight to c6. Also interesting is knight to f7, and then uh, uh, j just piling up on the knight on g5 with something like queen to d8. Uh, but knight to c6 here, we have king to d2, and now rook to g6. We have king to c1, uh, queen to c7, and now pawn to h3. And remarkable as it is, uh, this setup on the king side is quite solid. The knight defends the pawn, the rook defends the knight, also the pawn defends the knight. It's... Uh, uh, a pretty good uh, uh, defensive uh, setup, uh, and the rooks have no real way of entering the game. So here, queen to a5, attacking the c3 pawn. Queen to d2, defending, and now pawn to b5. This is how Richard goes after uh, MBL's king. He thought uh, he would just hide it on the king, on the queen side, but the uh, rapport says no, 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 sir. Uh, a captures on b5, and now rook to b8. And... Uh, the question is, what do you play here? The problem is, if you capture the knight on c6, do you see what uh, Rapport's idea was? Of course you do, you, are, you guys are amazing players. Uh, queen captures on a3. With check, so you, you, you sacrifice the queen, and after rook captures, the rook to b1 is checkmate. So, okay, what uh, can MVL do here? He plays bishop back to b2, opens up a discovery on the black queen, Queen captures on b5, and now bishop to a4. Attacks the queen, queen to b7, and king to d1. So he brought the king to the queen side, now it's time to go back to the king side. Or maybe even remain in the center. However, with the bishop on d3, uh, this does not look uh, all, all that impressive for the white king. Uh, knight to a5, and now bishop to e3. Uh, sorry, bishop to a3. And uh, here, there are many ways to continue the game. The most impressive one would have been, well, the most impressive one is, of course, what Rapport played, but uh, objectively best would be queen to a6. And it looks like a nothing move, because uh, what, what are you really doing? But you are, okay, attacking some pieces here that might be undefended. And after, let's say, bishop to c5, you will go rook to g7. And after queen to a2, you will now bring the queen back to c8. So it's a, a really weird set of moves, but... Uh, uh, this is what you have to do in order to keep pushing for the win with black. But here, after bishop to a3, a rapport played uh, queen to h7. He offered uh, his queen, and uh, the problem is now the position is winning for MVL, but it's, uh, it's really not easy to see why. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the only winning move for Maxime uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always thinking about the, the most important square in chess. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to b4. This is the only move that wins, and this is what MVL played. But just for fun, uh, I will show you what happens if you take the queen. If you take the queen, uh, it's not even winning for black. Uh, I mean, 
it could be winning because it's extremely complicated, but after rook captures on g1, there's only one move for white, queen to e1, and now you play knight to e3 with check, or you capture right away, but it's not that impressive. Uh, knight to e3 check, king to d2, and now you play knight to f1 with check. And now, the point is, if you move the king, then black will in fact be winning. So you're gonna capture the knight with the queen, uh, and now bishop captures on f1 uh, and pawn to f5. But, uh, I mean, this is finding all of this with white is um, uh, very, very hard. And now, for example, knight to b3 with check, king to e3, and now knight captures on a1. Bishop to c6 with check, king to b, uh, rook to b7, and now f captures on e6, creating a pass pawn. Bishop to d3, uh, now preparing to, to guard the queening square. Pawn to e7, knight to c2 with check, king to f4, and now bishop to g6. And uh, uh, who can make uh, heads of tails of this position? I mean, this is just uh, this is just uh, not possible to, to calculate, uh, especially if you if you look into something like bishop to d6 and then knight captures on d4, a piece sacrifice to create another pass pawn here. And after let's say knight to f6, again guarding the queening square, you throw in a pawn to c2, and now the bishop has to go back to defend the queening square. Uh, it would still be a game where many things are possible and, uh, uh, well, both of them could emerge victorious. However, after this queen to h7 move, Maxime played the strongest bishop to b4. And that's just how strong Maxime is. And uh, the problem is uh, now knight b3 is completely pointless because you will just uh, uh, take it with the bishop and then the bishop on d3 is hanging. So here, queen to h5 check by Richard, king to c1, and now rook captures on d4. We have c captures and knight captures on d4, uh, and here just king to b2. Again, strongest by Maxime. You don't want... Um, uh, the, the king here, for example, you play something like b captures on a5, then comes knight to e2 check with, with a nice fork here. Now you cannot go here because of c3 check with the royal fork. And if you go king to d1, the knight captures on g1, and uh, well, it's just a draw. For example, king to e1, queen to e2 with check, uh, everything gets traded off, captures, captures, and this is now uh, an equal position. Uh, but after knight captures on d4, king to b2 was played, uh, always the strongest reply by Maxime, and now knight a to b3. We have bishop captures, knight captures on b3, and now queen to f2, threatening checkmate on a7, uh, so pawn to d4. Uh, interestingly, knight captures on a1 is the way to go, uh, point being that after captures and captures, then you play d4. Uh, it's just uh, much, much easier to hold this. But after pawn to d4 right away, now uh, he, he just gave uh, Maxime uh, a way uh, to attend the game on the spot, basically, and I'm pretty sure you guys again see it because you, you, you're you amazing. Uh Queen to g2 check. Maxim didn't find it, but queen to g2 check is deadly because after king to b8, there's really no other move to try. Uh, queen to c6. And now it doesn't matter what you try. It doesn't matter if you capture the rook uh, or if you look at this. This is just uh, amazing. Queen to e2 check. King to a3. Now you capture on a1, but now knight captures on e6 check with the threat of queen uh, c7 check followed by king a8 and queen to c8 checkmate. Uh, if you capture the the rook with uh, uh, the knight with the rook, then rook to g8 will uh, be, be a very quick checkmate. And of course, uh, th there's nothing else to uh, to even attempt here. You could maybe try one check here, but after king to a4, uh, there's no follow up. Uh, you, you will have to decide uh, uh, in what way do you, do you want to get checkmated. So here, queen to g2 would have been uh, spectacular, but rook to a3 was played by Maxime. And now queen to e2 with check, a uh, rapport forces a queen trade. Queen captures, we have bishop captures, and now rook captures on b3, c captures, king captures, and now king to b7. All of a sudden we have an endgame, uh, and it's a race where uh, uh, MVL is up a pawn. We have knight to f3. Uh, rook to h6 going after the pawn, knight captures on d4. We have rook captures on h3 with check, king to b2, uh, rook to h2. Defending the bishop, we have king to c3, uh, and rook to h3 again with check. King to c2, rook to h2, uh, and now rook to g7 with check. MVL finds the, uh, the path to victory. 
king to b6, we have knight captures on e2, rook captures, and now king to d3. So remarkable as it is from that uh, complete mess of a position, we're now into an element, uh, we're now getting into an elementary endgame, a rook and pawn endgame where uh, MVL is up a pawn, but uh, uh, the problem for Rapport is that MVL's uh, 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 two pawns are connected and this pawn will fall, which means that he will have two connected fast pawns and uh, uh, probably the, the king will be uh, cut off from the game. Uh, we have rook to f2 going after the pawn, King e3, nicely defending, Rapport uh, attacks on b4, and now rook to g6, just going after the e6 pawn, there's no way to defend it, rook b3 check, king f2, and now rook captures on b4, rook captures on e6 with check, king to c5, and now king to f3. Uh, pawn to a5, the um, past a pawn starts marching forward, rook to a6, of course you always have to put the rook behind the past pawn, Pawn to a4, we have pawn to e6, and king to d5. We have pawn to f5, a3, and e7, and he was in this position on move 70 that MVL, uh, or rather uh, Richard Rapport, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So beautiful, beautiful game by uh, both of them. Like I said, it's, uh, it's uh, a bare knuckle bar fight, and... Um, uh, the, the, I mean, just b beautiful stuff here. The many moves could have been played differently. Many uh, positions maybe could have been uh, handled with more care. Uh, but, you know, they just uh, they just went at it. And th this is the result. So here, the problem is if you go rook to e4 to stop the queening, then you can, again, pretty much play anything, either f6, or you can just play rook a5 check, kick away the king from the defense of the rook, or if here, another check, you pick up the rook. Uh, or uh, after e7, you go rook to b8 to stop queening uh, like this, but then just pawn to f6. And if king to e5, just pawn to f7, and either pawn will queen, take the black rook, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, uh, brilliant stuff by, like I said, by both of them, but it is Maxime Bashir Lagrave who takes this one. And for those of you who haven't seen my previous video, uh, do watch it. But if you will not, uh, here are the standings um, uh, after six rounds have been played. So Magnus leading with four points as today is a rest day. So today they will not be playing any games. Uh, MVL Rapport and uh, world champion Ding Liren with uh, three points uh, and uh, Vincent Kammer and Daniel Friedman on two and a half. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Those were the standings. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Stefan Arnold Schelp, uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, David Gatten, Joyful Chess Lover, Mr. Hoodie Guy, and Andreas Rosenthal for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos. Sarah, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the Grand K Chess Classic uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And if you have a minute and a half, do watch the first link in the description below. It's a trailer for the Grand KHS Classic Tournament. See you soon.